<laughs> One, two, three. It's, it's the, the podcast. podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> got Zeke, got Jose, <laughs> got Gavin. We're here representing Wood Park Wednesdays on, in Jamestown, New York. On what is this, Third Street? Sandwich third between street. Third and Fourth Street. This is the Memorial Park. Across the street from MT Bank Old and M&T. the Liquid Monkey local head shop that you guys may or may not want to check out if you're down here you going to M&T Bank getting some money out first stop a little plug for those guys if they even watch us sponsors, sponsors maybe we'll talk but we got Gav here he's going to be performing tonight with Cole Lazarus who else is playing Gav slow motion breakdown from Warren PA yeah those Good are guys. my boys but uh this is something that we want to kind of get going here in Jamestown a little Wood Park Wednesday to go hand in hand with the sister show third thursdays good time as well over at the uh wine cellar wine cellar winter, winter garden. garden winter garden next yeah, to the wine it's cellar. the wine cellar so cole lazarus tell me born in 2016 uh, yeah 17 if you want to be technical yeah we had our first practice in december of last year okay first show was uh the battle of the bands at mojo's at the end of march and that was a which uh, i think show. i believe you had something to do with that one we would we might be doing something like that again but i remember seeing you guys for the first time a lot of good bands for the first time it was a heck of a night and since then momentum's picking up tell us a little bit about how the band started uh well uh obviously uh gould adam gould mark scapoletti and myself have been active in the music scene for a few years now uh cross paths downtown at various shows um I guess we just kind of got talking. Uh, every once in a while, we would meet up on on Mondays for Monday Night Football. Uh, particularly last fall, we kept crossing paths and talked about doing something a little different. Um, Are you you're, you're a fantasy footballer? Oh uh, yeah, every once in a while. I think I've kind of uh, fallen out of favor with that a bit. But okay. I did. I used to do it for many years. Just but, wondering. Um, anyway, yeah. so you guys were talking. About yeah, we just kind of started talking. I think Adam was it was between bands at the time. Anyway, um, I've been involved with my other project, the Electric Kings, for several years. Um, they definitely have a niche. Um, and Mark had previously uh, left the Porcelain Bus Drivers and has been playing with you guys, obviously. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were talking about uh, maybe just trying something a little new, different, exciting that we've never really done before, and decided to put that into motion and met up in December, Adam's aunt's basement on the south side of Jamestown. Give her a shout out. Place to be. Uh, yeah, that was my shout out. <laughs> we met there probably about three or four times and then uh, until we moved, then we moved things over to Scap's house on Lakeview. But, so that's how that all started. We uh, kind of just gelled almost instantaneously, uh, <coughs> put together three or four songs over those two or three practices, more or less. And uh, kind of kept fleshing them out and realized that we thought what we had was something something kind of special at least uh, in comparison to things that we've done before it, you know me personally at least um, so I think just, pretty awesome just kind of rolled with it when yeah. did you incorporate the keys into it uh, we brought drew on board at the end of January so just over a month after uh, that was Scap's suggestion because he played with drew previously with the porcelain bus drivers and uh, I guess Drew, Drew's been out of, about of, been out of the scene for a while. He's busy teaching out in Sherman and raising his kids and everything. Right. right. But uh, for some reason, Scap thought that uh, Drew might be a good fit, and he kind of floated the idea to him, and he was receptive. Came to a practice and checked it out, and really liked what he saw. And uh, thankfully, he jumped right on board with us and has been going full steam ahead. Kind of took it next level. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We. Uh, that was. I mean, we knew we probably needed something else in there aside, you know, we just had the drum, bass, and guitar for a while. We knew that there was probably another component, but we weren't sure if we wanted another guitar or, or keys or something like that, but he took it to a whole different level and really kind of provided that missing element, and uh, everything just kind of fit right into place. Samples. You guys use some samples? We do. Uh, that's, uh, that's mostly Scap's doing. He kind of plays around with sound clips and things like that. Um, we'd... Uh, I, we definitely are going to be including those on our forthcoming album, uh, just kind of plugging things in. I'd say about, at any one of our live shows, we have about a 50-50 chance of actually utilizing them, because sometimes we just don't want to go through all the hassle of getting the, the sampler set up and soundtrack. Right, so. right now, a little more raw at the live show, a but refined bit. on the... Yeah, I think it is more raw. Uh, I think the fact that we've been playing out uh, 
a, a pretty fair amount has definitely tightened us up quite a bit. Um, so I think uh, you know maybe just work on a couple of tempo things here and there, but for the most part, it's really tightened us up as a unit, and um, that's kind of been reflected in our songwriting as well, which I think is kind of evolving already. I mean, it's only been what nine months, but right, nine months. We're already already starting to. Full we already baby right there. Man. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's out now. But, uh, yeah, we, we're already working on material for a second album, even though we haven't finished the first one yet. Um, so, I mean, things are just going going right along. And, I feel like and you like have concepts are born, concept albums. Yeah, that's a, that's one way that we're actually considering that for the second one. We just got to figure out what the concept's going to be. Babies. <laughs> you do have you have released a um, an EP or right. a. Yep. How many songs? There's four tracks on that. It's called the All Alone EP. Um, we actually recorded that mid-February, probably about two weeks after Drew came on board. Uh, we kind of we picked what we thought were our four best songs up until that point, kind of tightened them up as much as we could as far as everybody having set parts, more or less. Took it down to Anthony Brown at Graphite Sound Studios in Warren, and he uh, helped us put that together in about two or three weeks. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, we put that out in March, just in time for the uh, the Battle of the Bands. And so far, that's been our our only recorded product that we've been selling at shows. And it's you have up. hard copies at we shows. Have, we have a few of those left. Um, we're on Spotify, Bandcamp, SoundCloud, all that stuff. Okay, cool. That's exciting. And you guys have a Facebook page where you yep. check out Cold Lazarus. Yep, Facebook, and we also have a, a website now, coldlazarusband.com, or simply coldlazar.us because we wanted to be. I don't know, facetious, I guess. I, I can dig it. It's it's easy to remember as well. And uh, what have you... You guys have only been together nine months, but it seems like a lot longer. It seems like, you know... In some ways it does, yeah, for sure. Because you've played a lot of shows. What were some of your highlights from the summer, man? What were some of the things that oh, really stood out like, yeah? First and foremost, definitely the Nightlights Music Festival was awesome. Uh, that was... I know Adam had been there in the past just checking out the bands. Um, that was uh, Scap mine and Drew's first time being there at all. I mean, we've been to the Heron before, but haven't had, had a chance to check out Nightlights. I'd say that was definitely the high point, just being around all that energy, seeing all those great, really talented bands was, uh, you know, simultaneously humbling and inspiring. Um, trying to think of some other cool things. Um, playing the King's Rook a couple times has been good. It's out in cool. uh, Erie PA. Erie PA. Yep. Been in there, we'll be back there in November. Um, What's the differences between playing local and uh, maybe across the border down in Erie? Well, uh, different clientele, obviously. I mean, here people know who we are just from seeing us downtown, and then you know, with the marketing we've done, they now it's just kind of people recognize the band name as well. So kind of a combination of those two. So in some ways, I feel like we have a little bit of a built-in following. I wouldn't say I don't know if it's really like huge or anything, but uh, we see sometimes the same people at most of our shows. Uh, Erie's kind of a, a fresh start a little bit. Um, you know, I know a few people out there, but uh, for the most part, you're just kind of, you just kind of go out there and do your thing and hope people respond well. And, you know, every every gig outside of town is an opportunity to try and find more people and get more shows lined up and stuff like that, so. Speaking of shows lined up, what do you got coming up here in the future? Uh, well. Actually, tonight, which will now be in the past by the time this airs, <laughs> we're playing here. Uh, Friday, we're playing at Nietzsche's up in Buffalo. And then on Saturday, we'll be at uh, Mojo's for the Local Music Showcase. Local Music Showcase, which we'll talk more about here in a little bit. Yep. Um, trying to think. I know we have a couple shows next week as well. Um, one at uh, EBC out in Bemis. And I think we had... There's one the night before, and for some reason I'm blanking on where that is. Right. So we're, we're doing another double header next weekend. You gotta make sure you show up to that. Yeah, well, it's on it's on our website, so <laughs> plugging the website again. People if, people can see our upcoming shows, including the band members, so we remember where we have to be. <laughs> That's cool, man. What about uh, Electric Kings? What do they got coming up? Electric Kings will also be at the local music showcase on Saturday. Um, I believe Cold Lazarus plays at 9.30 and the Electric Kings are 11.30. Both at Mojo's? Yep, both okay. at Mojo's. That's convenient. Um, we will also be playing uh, out in Erie next month. No, next week actually. Same day as Cold Lazarus is playing at Bemis, so that would be next Saturday. So you're not only pulling a double header, you're pulling like a triple double header. Kind, kind of, of, yeah, because I got two bands in one day. 
two completely different towns. States. So basically, you're and an states. animal. You're yeah, an animal. right now, and um, I'm, it's, I feel like it's kind of catching up to me a little bit right now because I feel extremely exhausted. Got to dig deep. But you just plow through it, man. We're red bull. Um, so yeah, Electric sure. Kings. Electric Kings will, will be um, out in Erie next week, and then we'll be at Fat Daddy's down in Warren in October. I believe that's all we have booked at the moment. Oh no, that we have October 21st at Mojo's as well. Nice. We just, we just lined that one up. Nice. Um, <coughs> you also work at the Post Journal, correct? Correct. Been almost five years. Five years at the at almost the PJ. Got one month to go. It'll be my five-year anniversary. Cool. Well, congrats. Congratulations. Thanks, man. That's good. Um, what, what, uh, what part of the paper, or what, where do people look to see your column? Uh, every Thursday, I do a weekly entertainment column. It's actually an entire entertainment page, but I do a sidebar column where I kind of just write about whatever is going on in my life. That's on Thursdays. Um, other than that, you can see my byline at any other point throughout the week, just general features and stories, like anything they throw my way, really. Cool. That I that I get assigned and actually accomplish. What do you like? Uh, what kind of stuff do you like tackling when they do throw that your way? What, they throw something your way, and you're like, "Yeah, this is the stuff I like to tackle." Uh, oh, definitely. Obviously, I'm kind of predisposed to be into the music and other and general arts and things like that. I like promoting bands and artists that might not otherwise get much attention in the local print publication. Um, so I think those are the kinds of things that I really enjoy doing the most. Um, really. I guess pretty much anything. Every once in a while, I'll come across a really, you know, just a generally interesting, like human interest story that I think is cool. Um, but really, just kind of anything that I feel, I guess, if I can give back, you know, kind of help people with publicity and just making just general awareness about, you know, what people are doing, what's going on in the community. Because um, you know, believe it or not, not everybody uses Facebook. Most people do, but right. you know, sometimes. Uh, There's still like five people. Right, <laughs> and those are the five people that I got to reach. So. Um, so yeah, basically anything, I guess it helps uh, kind of spread the word and grow the community in any way. You'd like to build up some people that might not uh, get the attention elsewise. So let's do it for the Post Journal. Who's an up and coming columnist or um, mm -hmm. a writer that you think you like to read their stuff and you think that they got a future? Or somebody, or just a favorite in general that you work with a peer that you're like, you know, I like their work. You mean that I've worked with? That you work with, yeah, that you work with uh, at the Post Journal. Well, I mean, one of the one of the sad facts about working at the PJ is some of your best and brightest end up moving on. Um, one of my uh, favorite uh, co-workers actually just left the paper a couple weeks ago. His name was A.J. Rao. He did the Cops and Courts beat for the last few years, and I thought he was a really solid writer and uh, did a great job kind of portraying you know, what's going on. You know, just had great prose in general, could you know, definitely structure an article well and very informative. Um, Where's he working now? Uh, he actually took up a post uh, out in the Virgin Islands, which is Virgin not a good place to be right now, but he's not going, he just, he won't, luckily he won't be there for a few more weeks. <coughs> Hopefully there will be something for him to go there. To go to, go yeah. To, yeah. Uh, so yeah, AJ was really good. Um, I got another, well, I, I guess uh, my current co-workers, Katrina Fuller and Jimmy McCarthy, um, definitely enjoy them as writers and as humans in general. Cool. Good people. So, so check out their columns? Yep, yep. Uh, Katrina has a column every Wednesday that in which she, just kind of a general column like what I do, just kind of writes what she feels. Uh, Jimmy is kind of in a transition phase now, it's kind of, he was doing the county beat and has kind of transitioned over into Cops and Courts with AJ leaving now. Oh, right now. But uh, he's covering, covering trials right now and stuff like that, but he's a... They're both excellent writers as well, so enjoy working with them and you know, give them a shout out. Cool, man. Right on. We've got Cole Lazarus got the gigs, <coughs> Electric Kings got the gigs, and the Post Journal's got the stories. Gavin, thanks for chatting with sure. us, man. Been a pleasure. Hey, one, two, three, it's the podcast, and I am proud to introduce none other than the newest member of Trip the Deuce, Jeremy Bunce. Jeremy. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So, guitar guitar player extraordinaire, you're finally getting down an original rock band. When's the last time you've been in a rock band? Oh, I mean, I was in the metal scene for a long time, and lately I've been more of a higher gun, a lot of covers and stuff like that. But it's been a few years, about three years since I've been in an original project. 
Now, uh, three years ago, what was the last project you were working on? The last project I was in, I was in a metal band called Amongst the Thorns. We played a lot, Erie area, um, not much around town here, but um, Bradford, Olean, that kind of stuff. Um, that's about the most recent original thing I had going on. But Metal scene's a hard one to crack. Certainly. Tell us a little, little, little bit about why it's a hard one to crack. Well, there's this, um, uh, a lot of times to get on gigs, there's this pay to play sort of situation where you right. have to sell tickets to even get on to a gig, right. let alone make any sort of money doing that. It's completely backwards compared to every other gig I play. Every other gig I play, you know, the artist is somewhat valued, but uh, metal is a really hard scene to get into. What would you tell the young metal, aspiring metal artist? What would you tell them how to get past some of those hurdles and well, keep chugging along? Well, for one, don't kill yourself trying to book gigs. The first thing is a good recording. You know, everything is YouTube these days. As much as I'm not really into that, you know, that's... But a lot of people are. That is the, the scene we live in these days. So good recordings, little videos, playthrough videos or music videos. That's your best bet to just get your name out there. I agree. I agree. Now, it's a big transition from going to metal music to pop covers. Yep. What's what's the difference in mentality when you go out and you present your baby that you know you toiled and you put in you put in the dog hair and whatever else and mix it around compared to like I don't know, like Christina Aguilera or something like that. You know, how do you turn it on and off like that? Or is it similar? Well, you know, whatever I do, even if I'm playing Taylor Swift, you know, I give it my all. If I'm just playing three chords or if I'm shredding over a metal kind of sweet picking sort of thing, I bring the same to it. You know? It's all about the inner power. Yeah, then. yeah. I just like to play. You yeah. know, when I was growing up, I was told there's only two kinds of music, good music and bad music, and that's subjective. Yep, that is. And as long as you bring your A game, no matter what yeah. the... Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know, you join... A half-assed shitty rock band, and all of a sudden they're not—they're a little more respectable. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag trip the deuce. What's up? <laughs> and anyways, got your first gig with the band under your belt at yep. the queue last yep. week. How did it feel? A lot of fun. A lot of fun. You know, with one practice. With one practice. Yeah. And it fucking—it sounded good to me, man. That's what I do. I am really good at just going with the flow and getting things thrown at me. I've been a hired gun around town for years and. That's what I do, it's just kind of last minute jump in. Do you have, you know, you're a songwriter? Yeah, somewhat. Do you have any million dollar songs hidden in your back pocket that you just can't wait to break out? Yeah. Things that I think would be good, I don't know how much of an audience it would be. Well that's where it starts. Yeah. I, I have a good time coming up with ideas, but finishing ideas, that's an issue. I can help you out with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Get the glue in there, glue it all together. So, we got the local mu music showcase coming up this Saturday. Hopefully, we get this podcast out by tomorrow. Cool. So that people can see it. You're playing how many places? I'm playing three times throughout the night. I'm playing um, Trip the Deuce and Mojo's from 6 to 7. I'm doing a acoustic set with Teal Weatherly from 7.30 to 8.30 at the pub. And then the band that I'm in with Teal Weatherly, it's called Rose Gold. We're back at Mojo's at like 10.20 or 10.30, something like that. Busy man. Busy, yeah. And I'm also working the whole night because I work for Infinity and they run the local music showcase. So, so what are you going to be doing in between? Volunteering? I pick up all the PA stuff and uh, drop it all off. and that kind of At the end of the night. At the end of the night. After yeah. everything is all tired. Yep. You have that inner strength. You got that motor to dig deep. Yep, yep. I love it. That's what I fucking love, man. What else do you like to do in your spare time, man? Well, I I put a lot of time up at Infinity Visual and Performing Arts. I'm a private guitar instructor. I do I, I direct bands. I teach primarily guitar, but I do drums and digital audio stuff. You know, that's how I fill a lot of my time. So no matter what I'm doing, I'm always kind of surrounded by music. It's better than working for a living, that's for sure. <laughs> well, it is work. It's hard work. It is, yeah. I mean, listen, I've done a lot of things, a lot of jobs, and music's got the biggest payoff, no doubt, but it can be frustrating as hell. So it's yeah, work. Yeah. It, it, it's fun, but it's always work, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, 
you work at Infinity teaching lessons. Yep. And you also, <coughs> I'm sorry, this this garbage truck is coming at me. He's getting me a little nervous. Oh, yeah. I just want to make sure he's good. <laughs> I've had jobs, and music can be frustrating. How can you focus and get through those frustrating moments like, you know, when a band collapses or when you're not feeling the energy? What can you do to persevere and continue growing your brand and your music and your abilities? Well, if we're talking about work, if we're talking about infinity, even if I'm having a bad day, you know, those kids, they kind of make it turn around, right. you know, that could be the highlight of their week or their month or whatever, getting to sit in with a band and sit in with real musicians, you know, that's what brings me out of my bad days at work. Um, you know, as far as my, my, per my own personal musical stuff, I really don't have bad days. If I'm playing, I'm happy. You're happy. Did you speak, oh, so, so kids, yeah, there's a thing about kids, you, they're like an open canvas. Uh, this new material hits hits them and starts uh, the electric flowing in different yeah. parts of their brain. And to see that happening as a teacher, I can't imagine there's too much of a greater thing than that. No, no. Yeah. I don't have many bad days. Right on, man. That's awesome. Uh, kids and music. Sounds like you've been around it for a long time. When did you start playing? Oh, I started playing when I was probably 13, 14, and I was a student at Infinity for years. And, you know, I've been teaching back there for three or four now, so 12 years. Well, I'm like 27 now, so 15 years getting close. That you've been playing music? Yeah, but I grew up with it. You know, my, my dad's a phenomenal guitar player. My mom's a classically trained music teacher, so. Did they teach you? Well, yeah, I was I was into piano lessons when I was six years old, and you know I just kind of picked things up from my dad for the past twenty years. Let's see what's he play like the blues. He loves blues, country blues kind of stuff, chicken picking sort of. He's just a monster player though. He's into that quick chicken picking, yep. and that kind of bled over into your metal. Uh... Yeah, definitely. There's there's so there's so many things that are just like encoded into my playing. Like Steve Ray Vaughan, I just grew up on that kind of stuff. And even if I try to avoid it, that stuff just like comes out in my playing. But I love it, you know. There's a lot of that kind of stuff that just comes out in everything I play, whether it's metal or pop, or whatever. Cool, man. So, how are you gonna whip me and the guys into shape and get us to get next level? Get musicians. Level. Yeah. Oh, I guess we're just gonna keep on coming up with good ideas, writing good music, um, you know, to see if we can push those boundaries. Well, baby. Yeah, we're doing the podcast. Man. What y'all doing? Shooting the podcast. Oh, what the fuck? Is that the camera? <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that out. No. <laughs> so, anyways, Jeremy. Music is life. Yep. Life is music. Yep. And I fucking love it. Thank you. Thank you for being here for the podcast. Oh, no problem. Thank you for joining the band and the future. I'm looking forward to it, man. It's I'm, I'm right. really excited. Now stick around because I'm going to have Gavin or I'm going to have one of these guys talk to you about local music shows. Okay, so cool. Stick around. One, All two, right. three. We're here with Jeremy and Gavin again. We're here to talk about the local music showcase. Both these guys have been doing it almost since its conception. Gavin, how long have you been around for it? I wouldn't say it's all, almost since its conception, but I've been involved pretty regularly for about six years, I'd say. That's, that's long enough. What about you, Jeremy? Six out of the 14. Uh, probably a good part of a decade. Yeah. Good part I of think, a decade. The, yeah, the first one I played was probably 2007, 2008, but I remember them even from 04, 05. Which band was that that you played in 07? Oh, I can't, I think it must have been Midas. I was in a band called Midas. It's a, it was an Infinity student project that went on to be more of a kind of just a solo band that we kind of broke away from Infinity, but I think that was it of my memories. So you guys have been doing this a long time. What are some of the favorite bands that you've seen in the past or are looking forward to seeing this year? Um, well, I, I guess one of the obvious choices for me would be to say that I've seen, I've enjoyed seeing uh, Smack Dab in the audience playing pretty much anywhere they, they play is always going to be packed and they always put on a great show. Um, particularly uh, three years ago, I believe it was when they, both those bands played back-to-back -back slots at Shawbucks 
and that was at that time the busiest I'd ever seen it in that place. Oh, yeah. Those were some pretty memorable shows for me. Um, trying to think, I, I guess I've, I've seen so many bands, and then there's other times like this year, for example, where I've got two shows on the same night I'll, where I'll probably end up mostly being situated around Mojo. So I'm not sure, uh, not, not sure how much wandering I'll end up doing, but uh, I mean, any any time there's music going on all around downtown is, is a really great thing. Yeah, so. definitely a great time to wander around and see what's going on around. What about you? What bands are you looking forward to? What bands do you miss? Oh, what bands am I looking forward to? I would agree with Gavin with uh, the audience and Smack Dab. They're just like a staple of Jamestown. Yeah. And any chance I can get to see Danny play, I'm yep. happy oh, to course. see him. Solid he's, drummer. He's excellent drummer. And it, it's a good chance to see um, some of your friends that you don't really get to see play around town. I like to see um, Steve Davis. He always does some kind of cool solo stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Gary Peters, he's a blast to watch. Um, I'm also looking forward to Cold Lazarus because Drew, I'm, I also play with Drew a bit here, That's and right. I, I haven't had a chance to see you guys yet. Yeah, great. This might be your opportunity. Okay, now. cool. Well, definitely the opportunity. So, what, in its essence, what does this showcase mean to you on a personal level? My turn. Uh, to me, I guess it just kind of symbolizes um, a community kind of coming together, both inside and outside Jamestown. I guess I, I know we get a lot of bands from from PA and even maybe North, like North County and things like that. Um, just everybody kind of banding together, pun intended, for a good cause. Um, obviously, up the proceeds go to Infinity, which is a great organization for our community here. Um, and uh, I guess it kind of says a lot about the fact that these bands are all doing it on a volunteer basis. Oh, yeah. You know, nobody's making anything on it uh, as far as the musicians go. So they're just kind of donating their, their time and talent to uh, a worthwhile cause. So. It's definitely worthwhile. I was a student of Infinity as well, alongside Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate the efforts of the local music showcase. What does it mean to you if it's not similar to that one? Because you could just say ditto if you want. And probably the same, but you know, being on the inside of Infinity, you know, it, it's it's really, um, you know, it means a lot to see all those people donate their time and just kind of really push together to kind of make this happen. And it's not even just the bands; it's the people who have to volunteer at the doors and the sound people and every people. Every, a lot of people just kind of set aside time to make that happen for a place like Infinity, and it's just amazing. Yeah, it's great to see the community come together like that, it really is. So one more question that isn't really involved in the showcase. It's more of a personal inquiry from our main man, Zeke. Oh yeah? Oh. How does music affect your relationship with the ladies, especially after a gig, once you're done plucking your fingers or plucking your strings? Jeremy, go. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't really have anybody storm me after a gig. and. No, you don't. You don't have that that Jimmy Page aspect on stage. Oh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of like mythos, mythos yeah. to like uh, guitar players. Are you in a relationship? I am. Yes. He's being a little uh, reserved here, I Jose. Am. I am. Who's, who's the lucky lady? Did she meet me at a show? Did she meet me at a show? No, but she was a mutual friend of a former bandmate. Uh, so. Guys, she on. does like the band guys. Come on, son, don't lie. <laughs> She's not gonna watch this. Girlfriends never watch these shows. They really me. don't, though. Talk about the power of rock. Power of rock. I'm just kidding. I'll shut up. Yeah. So see, I was like, see, Zeke is putting these guys on blast. It wasn't my idea, Gavin. <laughs> you know, I wish I had more to contribute there, but. Um, I, I can say I've crossed paths with a lot of ladies, and not much more has happened beyond that. I love it. So such a gentleman. I mean, answer. it's a, it's a, it's one of those things where, like, uh, like Jeremy said, there's, I think, um, it's kind of, it's, whatever the opposite of stigma is, because it's supposed to be a good thing. But you said mythos. Yeah, there's, there's kind of this notion that musicians tend to get chicks, and I think it just has just as much to do with uh, other stuff as well. Charisma that maybe not all of us have. But you know, you'd think that especially the bass players working the fingers maybe. Definitely. But you know. They're losing the beat. They're right. working you the know mouse. What, right. Tell me. It's okay though because we uh, I, while you guys were over there I was getting good crotch shots of all of you. Okay good. So when we added that in you know you guys will probably be getting Jesus, all the don't, don't you be getting my crotch y'all. Don't you be getting my crotch. Everybody's been getting good crotch shots so to go along with your music resume all right, well, to end that serious interview on a funny note, 
Gavin, yeah. always a pleasure, my friend. Thank Jeremy, you, welcome to the fold once again. Nice to see ya. We're out. It's a podcast. Got Gaetano here. What's up, man? Keep him up. It's my dude. We cut our teeth playing at the JCC Rock Ensemble in 2000. Too long ago for me to want to admit out loud. So, dude, you you watched what eight episodes of Game of Thrones? Yep. And then stopped. No, I haven't stopped. It's just I got busy. You got work. I got a daughter at home, so you know. Cool. Busy guy. Cool priorities then. That's right. Right on. How's your daughter doing, man? Pretty good. Uh, she just smashed her toe maybe like three weeks ago. She uh, she was messing with a sewer cover. Oh, she picked it up and it fell back oh. right on her toe. Yeah, I've done that before. It hurts like a son of a bitch, man. Yeah, that's how you know you're hardcore, though. You do crazy shit like that. Hey, that's how we live. That's right. So what you got going on here? Hanging out at the uh, Liquor Monkey? Yeah, I work there. Cool. Tell us about. Tell us a little bit about business. That's business is good. You know, we sell incense, little statuettes, crystals, glass pieces. You know, we get business is always good. You want to give us a little tour of the place? Yeah, sure. You think that's cool? Yeah, let's absolutely. go for a tour. So, how long have you been working here, man? Oh, a little over three years now. Three years. Yeah. Cool. You get a lot of crazy clientele come through here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got up here. It's one of the resident workers. That's the owner, grandson Uriah. What's up, Uriah? How you doing? Uh, can we can we uh, get you on tape here? Sure. All right. I was just finishing up, but I can make a couple little things. Yeah. What are you doing in here? Blowing glass. I just I make pipes for the shop. So, right. Yeah, so if I just shut this down, then there's some stuff up in here. So. Ooh. Got anybody you want to throw a shout out to while you're here? Not particularly. I guess. <laughs> I don't know, my dad. He's not gonna talk to me, but he taught you how to blow glass? Yeah. to attempt to make diamonds. Yep. Seems pretty fragile. It is. It really is like, it says don't touch because it'll sliver off. Yeah. And that's probably one of the hardest things to get out of your skin, is stone. Yeah, it's no, no. so brittle, it'll just break off right in your- Wonderful. Your so go ahead, and I'll touch it. What, what are they for now? <laughs> um, I don't know, just- They're just cool look looking. At, I actually think they make stuff out of carbon. There's a place in town I think that does. Really? To tell you the truth, yeah. Dragon glass. That's how you kill White Walkers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'd believe right. that actually. You couldn't kill something with that. You know? Well, yeah. Right. I mean, and even if you didn't kill a White Walker with it, uh, the stones would get caught in their fingers and give them a rough day. That's right. <laughs> Probably be a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what kind of, uh, what's probably the most hottest incense of the season, Gaetano? Hottest incense of the season. Every season would be the Nag Champa. Nag Champa. Best stuff ever. It's classic. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Great stuff. It flies off the shelf. It does. It really does. The super hits are good. Uh, any of the, what is it? Satya brand. Any of them. Highly recommended. Yes, absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. So what's something new you got in here that you're kind of interested, intrigued by? Interested, intrigued by. Something that, you know, is kind of new to the shop that you might try to sell a patron on. Oh, well, that's easy. I mean, it depends on what kind of patron you get. You, know, you get the older folks who stay away from the back where the pipes are. You got uh, these handmade 
wire wrap jewelry made by uh, Angel, she's the lady who runs this part of the store. Uh, she'll spend days just wrapping stones, making all these. Every single one of them she made. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Do you guys ever take the show on the road? Uh, haven't for a while, but he was thinking probably next year start going other places and you know festivals and whatnot and uh, selling some stuff. Do you guys got some uh, web presence? Any way to check out your stuff online? Um, liquidmonkeyglass.com. Uh, it's not fully up, like you can't order things from it, but there's... It just showcases what you got. Right, that's right. Facebook page? Yep, absolutely, Facebook page. Uh, good stuff, man. Also, what is it? Crystal Bodai Tree, that's this part of the store. Okay, so we got sections. Yes, absolutely. So we got the Crystal Bodai Tree over here. Yep. We got, what is this section? Same thing. Oh, that's the part, and the then front of the this house. section over here. That's right, and this is all with the monkey Yeah, let's this go. This is the meat and potatoes. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty. Oh, yeah. These two top shelves here, those are all handmade. They're either made here or by one of Grant's buddies. He's got buddies all over the country. That's, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, What's the store hours? Store hours are between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, Tuesday to Friday, and then Saturday 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Cool, man. Good times. Um, good times. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is uh, kind of a his before the monkey was here. Um, didn't it used to be a head shop before that too? Like, I think the gray or something touch like of gray that? and the other two were here too. So like, it's just like. Some owners have come and gone, but this is the spot, and that awesome. helps business because people live. There's one thing they know. Isn't that that one spot? And they, yeah, it's still there. That's so right. location, location, location. You guys did a good job with that. Oh, absolutely. Did a good job. Absolutely. Middle downtown, great presence. You know, you got the Lucy people Lots coming of foot in. Traffic. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. What do you think about this new series across the street, Wood Park Wednesdays? You liking it? I do. I do. I cool. like it a lot. I think it's a great thing for the community. A uh, great way to bring people together, just listen to some cool music, hang out. Right on, Absolutely. dude. What do you got to say to the future customers? Why should they come to Liquid Monkey? Why well, don't you come to Liquid Monkey? Because we got quality glass, we got quality crystals and products, things you'd want. Right, right on. For any, any day of the week, you know, any holiday, Social whatever. Occasions. That's right. We for got, a gift? That's right, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Right on, man. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having us. No problem. Catch you later. Hey, man. Thanks for watching. One, two, three. It's the, it's podcast. the podcast. We've all been Xing up out here just before the rain fell. It's, it's coming. We it's talked coming. to Gavin from Cold Lazarus from Electric Kings, Post Journal. Check out those fine bands in that fine newspaper. We talked to Jeremy Bunce, the new guitar player for Trip the Deez. He's going to be playing six p.m. at Mojo's on Saturday, getting the local mu music showcase <laughs> started off right. And then we took a little trip over here to Liquid Monkey. It's all the Buddha. Where they have the finest glass pieces on this side of the Mississippi. So come check them out when they said their hours were, because I can't remember. There were hours. They were in the video. You saw that. You heard it. My brother said he was going to be here to be the third. He He's wasn't. Slipping. He slipped. So you're slipping, Kaz. And Joel, I haven't seen last week's podcast, but I heard you were talking shit. And the week before, you definitely called me out. Before I even knew what was going on. And then you had the audacity when I get a chance to come face to face with you to not even show up. Well, guess what, Rockstar? I think the tension has grown a little too deep. I'm sick of you being late to work and just showing up whenever you want like Zeke doesn't have a life to live and he can wait for your ass because oh you own the place. Well guess what? I challenge you to a wrestling match. Lair League rules. Grappling, submissions, perhaps noogies and cross faces. No striking because I don't want to break that ba that money maker, Fear that baby clear. face. But woo! <laughs> you're talking to the Adidas sandals wearing, plaid pajama pants wearing, sunglasses flashing, sons of anarchy dome piece rocking, 
Limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun. And I'm having a hard time keeping these Adidas sandals down. Woo! Except my challenge at heavyweight. I know you'll be going up a weight class, but you once told me that you're about the bravest man since Jon Snow. So let's see if you can put your money where your mouth is. Next month, wrestling match. Me versus you for the one, two, three. It's the podcast heavyweight championship of the world. Joel, the ball's in your court. One, two, three, except son, we out. We keep an old Folgers coffee can of cigarette butts on our front porch. A welcome mat reminder that we're all a little burnout. And at times, I think our hearts are harder to bust open than our front door, but you learn that all the things that keep you safe are never that easy to get to. But I know I'm safe in here. You see, my house is a two-story dreamer's dormitory. I think we have never called it home, just haven for the days we need a place to lay our heads. We call this mining country, mostly because we're all just diamonds in the rough, stuck, and we dig into the bottoms of our bags trying to find ourselves almost as often as we're digging for our half of the rent. But it's not special without us. So we stay, for now. But it's hard. At times, this house is...